Hello everyone, welcome to USI's webinar and for this episode, we will be giving an update about the performance of both the global and local markets as well as some insights that we hope will be able to help your trading or investing journey. To start, let me first introduce myself. I'm Marco Hanairo and I graduated last year with a degree in chemical engineering. Then after that, I joined USI as an equity research analyst and currently, I am responsible for covering companies that fall under the cement, oil, and power sectors. Some of these companies you might be familiar with, these are companies such as Filipinas Shell, Meralco, and Holcim Philippines. So this will be out the outline of our presentation for today. And as mentioned earlier, we will first take a quick look on the global markets and then we will focus more on the updates and opportunities in the Philippine Stock Exchange. Now, if we take a look in the US market, the Dow Jones have seen quite a rally in the previous weeks. It has increased by more than 4,000 points from its low. This rally was likely caused by the optimism from investors as the aggressive support from the Fed continued to come in. From the side of the Fed, we've seen various efforts such as $2 trillion rescue efforts, rate cuts, and lending programs that can inject more than $6 trillion into the, into the U.S. economy. And then if we look at the right, right side of this chart, we can see that the volatility index or the fear gauge that we've mentioned in our previous webinar has now went back at a significantly lower level despite the gloomy unemployment data in the recent weeks. Next for oil, the outlook for crude remain negative as the limited movement caused by the pandemic continues to weigh on demand. We've seen a historic drop to negative $30 per barrel uh, as the demand for crude that are set to be delivered by May is very low. For the Philippines, since we are a net importer of crude, we are actually one of the countries that will be benefiting from the slump in prices. Now we'll take a look at various economic data for the Philippines. So let's we'll start with the GDP growth. Historically, the GDP growth has trended at a range of 5 to 7 percent, with an exception of 2011 when it registered a 3.7 percent GDP growth. Now for this year, Noong next start yung year, the government has set a target of 6.5% to 7.5% GDP growth. But we expect that they will eventually adjust it, mainly because at that time, hindi pa factored in yung effects of the pandemic. So on the right side of the screen, we can see the revised 2020 GDP estimates of various economies from S&P, Moody's, Fitch, IMF, World Bank, ADB, and NEDA. So the lowest of them is from S&P, wherein they expect a 2% contraction, followed by NEDA, which has a 0.6% contraction. As you can see on the right side of the screen, Philippine GDP is mainly driven by private consumption. It accounts for more than 70% of our GDP. So for 2019, it accounted for 74.6% of our GDP. So for this year, we expect that the GDP growth will be subdued given that there will be significantly less consumption coming from the private sector as a lot of jobs have been affected by the coronavirus pandemic and it is expected that the household spending will be limited as they cut back on their expenses. So on the left side, we can see that the inflation has been behaving quite nicely in the 2-4% to 4 range that our government has set as a target for this year. So potential additional easing factors for inflation is we are expecting lower electricity prices and we have, with the drop that we have seen in crude in the previous days, we are also expecting significant drop or rollback in gasoline and diesel prices. Similar to the Fed, the BSP has also been taking actions to fight off the effects of this pandemic. 
Mr. Benjamin Jokno, the BSP chief, announced last week an off-cycle 50 base 50 basis points rate cut as a part of their effort to boost lending and to support the economy. Additionally, the Monetary Board also authorized Mr. Jokno to trim the reserve requirement ratios by up to 400 basis points this year in order to inject additional liquidity in the financial system. As for the Philippine Peso, it has been showing strength compared to its Asian peers. According to a recent report from the Finance Undersecretary, out of the 12 Asian currencies, only 3 out of 12 have shown strength versus the dollar, one of which is the Philippine Peso. Part of the strength in the Philippine Peso can be attributed to a record high of $88.2 billion in gross international reserves and, oil pr and low oil prices. Now we'll move on to the local market of the or the Philippine stock market, which is the most important part of our presentation. So, nung last kami nag-update sa March 31 uh, webinar, the PSEI was still down by 33%. And then, days and weeks following that, lakas nung surge nung market sa iba't ibang stocks, possibly because of bargain hunting. So, laki na nang binabaan nung index from its peak this year and then that time isang stock lang yung up here to date which was TEL or PLDT then now may dalawang nagdag pure gold and globe as you can see consistent yung performance ng mga stocks na listed sa PSEI dun sa current operations ng business nila so the leaders in this pack are pure gold TEL and globe pure gold mainly because of the panic buying as uh, as we need to store up on goods during this lockdown and talent globe essentially because of higher data usage since most of the people nasa loob lang naman ng bahay nila and they will be focusing more on using the internet aside from using the internet for leisure they will also be using it for work kasi karamihan ng mga business na nag-operate ngayon work from online setup here is our base case scenario for PSEI if we assume that the total period of the lockdown will be limited to 2 months we expect a 6.1% decline in EPS reflecting 7,700 pesos per share as our fair value estimate for the index however if we mimic a similar scenario to the global financial crisis back in 2008 and we assume that we will be having a 33% decline in EPS growth our TP will fall down to 5,600 pesos per share which is just almost equal to the current price of the index now we will be moving to our preferred sectors ito yung mga sectors na either we think will be resilient during this pandemic or set are set for a recovery once this pan pandemic subsides. So first, we have the banks. The main upside for the banks is that during this time, wherein a lot of businesses are not ongoing with their normal operations, a lot are experiencing shutdowns. Banks, banks are tagged as one of the necessary activities during this period, so they continue to be operational despite having skeletal workforce. Next is that monetary policies are in place to support the industry. And lastly, majority of the banks, particularly the big banks, have health, healthy balance sheet position, which we expect to, will be able to counter the possible spike in bad loans. For the downside risk, one is subdued credit growth, and next is wave interest fees and charges to hurt the rev that will hurt the revenues. So the next sector that we like is the consumer sector. So as we have seen before before the start of this ECQ, there has been an initial panic buying. And then may kita natin sobrang haba ng pila sa mga grocery stores and yung mga shelf karamihan hindi na kumpleto or may mga shelf na com completely depleted na. And we expect the retailers of consumer st staples to benefit from that. Next, we have the restaurant operators with strong food delivery presence both for in-house and aggregators so now that the in-house community quarantine is ongoing people tend to to use the delivery services especially for the people who are not usually cooking at their homes 
And then last part for the upside, the stable prices of raw materials due to price risk limits the cost incurred for the inventory of these companies. However, the downside risk for the consumer sector, one is the foregone revenues from the restaurant operators following the mall closures. And next, the companies with underdeveloped digital and delivery channels will have a hard time adapting to the current situation. For the last two sectors, we have the power and telco sector. For the power sector, kahit na we have seen a 30% drop in power demand since the start of ECQ, we believe that the sector is set to recover once the ECQ is lifted and businesses resume their operations. So unlike other businesses na they might have a hard time recovering from the pandemic kasi the spending habits of people will start to change. They will prefer to cut back on their expenses and spend more on the necessities only. The power sector won't have a problem with that given that it is a necessity for everyone and yung drug naman sa power demand came from the industry and commercial sector which accounts for more than 60% of the total demand. Next, the long-term growth story for the sector is still intact. We mentioned before in our market outlook for this year that the power sector has a lot of room for expansion given that there is an expected tightening of supply. So we see that the different power generation companies will still be able to, to build more on their portfolios whether for the renewable and energy or the, term, the thermal ones. So as we mentioned a while ago, downside risk is the drug caused by the steep drop in power demand during the ECQ. Next, we have the telco sector. This is the industry that is least affected by the coronavirus pandemic. As we can see, a lot of people are now relying on their mobile data, they're using their phones when staying at home, and a lot of businesses are also relying on a work from home setup in order to continue with their operations. And then once the ECQ is lifted, we can also expect that consumers may be more inclined to use online services in order for them to adapt with this new type of normal. Potential upside for Telco is the opportunity for the network expansion in order for them to support capacity and sustain the demand growth in the sector. However, the downside risk is that construction of Telco infrastructure could be delayed due to the lockdown, especially now that a lot of supply chains are affected by the lockdown and there's limited things that we can do outside. So let's move on to the top 10 stock picks of Finicapital Securities. So among these top 10 stock picks, all of them are from the sectors that we mentioned a while ago, the top four, sec top four sectors that we prefer and one is a conglomerate which is Ayala Corporation. So to start, we have the three big banks, BDO, BPI, and Metro Bank. So for BDO, we like BDO mainly because majority of its loans are corporate accounts, which makes it less susceptible to default, especially now that for a lot of businesses, the cash flows are interrupted. So it will be more risky for banks to have their exposure on SMEs. Compared to our fair value estimate of 128 pesos per share, the upside for BDO is at around 28%. Next, we have BPI. So as we mentioned a while ago, for a lot of companies, digit digitalization will be a huge part now that you're facing a different kind of situation. So we like BPI for its strong presence in mobile banking and as well as a healthy balance sheet that will help it navigate through the storm. Our fair value is at 77.8 pesos per share, representing an upside of almost 30%. Next, Metrobank, the one with the highest upside among the three of 51%. We prefer Metrobank mainly due to almost similar reasons to BDO. It has a loan book that is post mainly of corporates and high net worth mid-market accounts, making it less susceptible to default. And also, Metrobank is the cheapest among the big banks, trading at a P, uh, full year 2020 PB of 0.5 times. And then next, Pure Gold. As you can see, the upside 
that we have compared to our fair value estimate is 8.5%. However, we can see a potential overshoot from that upside, mainly due to the panic buying that we experience, which can then which will then result to a significant uptick in sales for pure gold during this period. So additional upside might come from the network from its network expansion initiatives. And then next Meralco. Meralco is one of the favored names when it comes to its stable dividend payout. And also at the current price it gives a dividend yield of five point two percent which is already good given that majority of the more resilient companies have less than 5% dividend yield. Next, it has a strong balance sheet so we won't have a problem moving forward that there's a potential disruption in its dividend payout. And lastly, as we mentioned a while ago for the power sector, it is set to recover once businesses resume their operations. So the upside for from the previous close is at 21%. Next, avoid is power. So although avoid is power deferred the initial target date for its planned expansions, we still think that it is fairly undervalued at this current price. So currently it is trading two standard deviations below its history historical average PB. It has a dividend yield of 4.4% and an upside of 26.6%. So if you want to have a, an exposure to a power generation company that has a, port, a portfolio mix of both renewable and non-renewable energy, Aboitis Power is the company that you would like to invest in. Next, we have First Gen Corporation. Since now that the demand for the, for the power industry has been challenged, we can expect a significant drop in WSM prices. As for FGen, they are relatively more resilient when it comes to the fluctuation in the WSM prices because 90% of their contracted capacity is shielded from the said fluctuations. So we have an upside of 35% for first gen and a dividend yield of 3.8%. Next, we have our conglomerate, Ayala Corporation. Although this is not part of our coverage, we believe that AC is one of the names that will be able to withstand the challenges that come with this pandemic and will be able to take more of the opportunities moving forward. So it is one of the most diversified conglomerate. It has industry leading companies such as BPI, Globe, and Ali. Based on the PV valuation, AC has an upside of 65% from its previous close of 593 pesos per share. Next, we have Ali and Tel. So for Ali, even if the property sector is not part of our preferred sectors, we still think that Ayala land is worth looking at given the extremely cheap valuations that it currently has. So we are seeing an upside of 52% for Ali. Next, we have PLDT. As you mentioned earlier, the telco sector is pretty much the most resilient industry during this pandemic. So this, the PLDT will be benefiting from surge in data demand. It also has a strong balance sheet and consistent dividend distribution that makes it a viable long-term play. Our upside for PLDT is at 23%. So we also added four additional names that didn't make it to the cutoff for our top 10, but we think are also worth looking at given the attractive upside that these four companies have. First, we'll start with Bloom. Our fair value estimate for Bloom is 10.9 pesos per share, which represents a 93% upside from the 5.66 pesos per share close. So Bloom is a gaming industry leader with a strong cash position of around 40 billion pesos cash on hand in 2019. It is also currently undergoing aggressive expansion for Solar and the ongoing construction of its second casino in Quezon City. Next, we have Megawide. Our fair value estimate for Megawide is 15 pesos per share. This implies a more than 100% upside from the 6.8 close. A potential incentive for Megawide is that it has a record order backlog and we can expect revenues to surge given a strong cash up after the lockdown. Next, we have Semirara. Semirara is 
a name that has been battered since last year given the issues that its coal business faced. However, at the current price, it is too cheap to ignore as it is already representing a forward dividend yield of 9.9%, assuming that they won't adjust the their dividend payout and they won't defer it as well. So from our fair value estimate of 22.9 pesos per share, we have an upside of 91%. Next, a consumer sector play, we have Jollibee Foods Corporation. Given that Jollibee Foods Corporation is one of the names that a lot of investors are looking at, it is already a plus that we can chip, we can buy it cheap at this level. So our fair value estimate for JFC is 165 pesos per share with an upside of 23.4%. The delivery and takeout orders will be able to partially offset the forgotten dine in revenues for Jollibee during this ECQ. For our strategy, we encourage our clients to stay defensive, especially now that we will be approaching the earnings season. Doon makita na natin yung actual figures na naging effect ng coronavirus pandemic to the companies. So if we see a worse than expected figures, we can expect more correction in the market. And with that, we can expect additional volatility in the PSEI. Next is to only choose fundamentally sound companies. With a lot of the cash flows for various businesses being disrupted, we would prefer to have our exposure on companies with strong balance sheet, reliable management that we expect will be able to take advantage of the opportunities once the ECQ is lifted. And lastly, the most important one is to always manage risk. We encourage our clients to diversify their portfolio whether through picking stocks that are in different sectors or having their funds in various asset classes such as equities, bonds, etc. And for those who are buying equities, we encourage you to buy in tranches given that we are not yet certain that we have already seen the bottom for the PSEI and the global markets. We would want to have our exposure but limit it as well to have enough cash and buy at lower prices once we see additional correction in the market. So in summary, despite the gloomy economic outlook, the investors in the PSEI and Dow Jones or in Wall Street has been pretty much optimistic as we have seen in the rally after the steep drop in the market in the first quarter. So as mentioned a while ago, we expect more volatility in the coming weeks as companies start to report their first quarter earnings. Next, very important, always manage your risk. Be highly selective in the companies that you will add in your portfolio. And prioritize sectors that are relatively more resilient and are set to recover once the lockdown is lifted. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment sections below and we will gladly answer them. So thank you for your time and we hope that you were able to pick up some valuable insights from this presentation. Stay safe.